Stepper motors. If you're a beginner in electronics, stepper motors might seem daunting. I mean, we've got four wires to deal with, we have to swap the phases of the coils, it's a pain in the ass, right? Well, not really. This video is going to show you how simple it can be to drive one of these stepper motors using one of these. This is an A4988 stepper motor driver. It does all the switching for you, so all you really need to do is give it one simple input and it'll drive the stepper motor for you. Let's show you how it's done. Now these A4988 modules can be had on eBay and AliExpress for under a dollar. So why would you want to deal with four wires and changing polarities when you can just pay a dollar and deal with these little modules? Now a lot of people think, well, this is more complex. We've got way more pins here than we do on the stepper motor. So how the heck can we drive this thing? Well, if you just do a Google image search for the A4988 module, you'll see here we have a handy wiring diagram. Now this also may look complex, but I'm telling you it is not. We give the motor some voltage, we give the motor a ground, we plug all four wires into this end, then we give a logic level voltage and a logic level ground, then we need a direction, a pulse train for the step, we need to link reset to sleep. Don't worry about these MS things for now, and we just need to use the enable pin. This is all, and I promise you it is not complicated. Here you see I've got both my power supplies dealt with. I have the breadboard power supply just to deal with the logic side and I've got this power supply which is powered from the mains on my bench. So this is all we need. Two power supplies. Sometimes you can use just one but for this demonstration I'll show you that it works good with two. So first we'll go over here. We need to give our motor uh, anywhere between 8 and 35 volts depending on your motor. Mine's a 12 volts. Uh, my motors work really well on 12 volts so that's what we're going to be using. And a ground. So here I have the positive. So just put into this pin and the ground. There. Done. Now we do need one outside component. It's a 100 microfarad capacitor which I have here. The band on these capacitors are the negative side, so we're going to put it in like so. And there we go. So these two pins already dealt with. Next up will be the actual motor leads. I have these pin headers cut up and ready to go. So I'll put these pin headers in the next four pins. And then can plug the motor plug to it. I have the motor just off to the side here. So I'm going to plug this in here. I'm going to bend the wires a bit so they're not in our way. And that's done. So we've already done all six of these pins. Next I'm going to power the logic side. Now because of this breadboard power supply I've got 5 volts on the red rail here and 0 volts on the blue rail here. So I'll give it uh, 5 volts over here. So I plug this one here. These are cheap breadboards, so sometimes it can be a pain in the butt, especially if you're trying to record a video. Okay, and plug this back in. And now, I just need to give it ground on the last pin over here. Always double check your connections as you make them so you don't have to come back later. So this whole side now is done, right? We have the power and the ground for the motor, the four leads for the motor, the capacitor, and VDD and ground for the logic side. So that's done. Now we can deal with the other side. It's a little bit more complicated, but not by much. So let's start with this enable pin. This enable pin will allow us to use the chip or not. So you can turn on and off the chip by moving this high or low. Now you see this bar on top of the enable? That means it's reverse logic. So instead of giving it 5 volts if you want it to turn on, you actually have to give it ground if you want to turn on. So here I have 
7.5K resistor, you, it doesn't really matter which resistor you use as long as it's a high enough value that you're not uh, moving a lot of current through here. So I'm going to put this to ground. So it's just in the blue rail on this side. Now if you didn't have a power supply that attack, attaches to both rails, then you would actually just put a link over on the bottom here. We don't have to worry about that in this case. Next, MS1 and MS2 and MS3. This is for micro stepping and we won't worry about that for now. First we just want to get our stepper motor spinning. So reset and sleep, as you see on the diagram, they have to be pinned together. For that I have a tiny jumper, I don't know if you're able to see it. I can barely get it into the breadboard, so I'm going to try here. There we go, that's in. Now we're going to deal with this direction. And so for the direction, basically you give it ground, it goes one direction, you give it power, it goes the other direction. So if you only need one direction, like what we're going to do right now, you can either tie it to ground or power, and if it's the opposite of what you needed, just swap it around. So here we're going to put it to ground. That's actually going into power. Now it's going into ground. Okay. So now direction is tied to ground, so it'll be low. Now the step. So the step is the hardest thing to deal with, but it's actually not difficult. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie the step to ground. And I tie the step to ground because we're going to send it um, a pulse, which will be high. And we want that pulse that as soon as we stop the pulse, we want it to dissipate all into ground. So we don't want it to think that we're still pulsing it high, even though we've let it go. So again, 7.5K resistor going to ground. Next, I'm going to use the jumper link to move that step to somewhere we can use on the breadboard. So you see there, it's now on this number 17 here. So we just pulled the step up to the number 17. Then we'll use a little tactile switch, a little clicky switch. I'm going to put this in the breadboard. There we go. And now pin 17 here of the breadboard uh, is just going to nowhere. But we want to be able to link it to pin 15 here by pressing the button. So that's where the two legs of the button are in. Next we'll put a 7.5K resistor into that pin 15, the other side of the button. And so now when we press this button, it'll short the red rail, which is the high rail, to the step. And then when we let go, it'll dissipate all whatever capacitance is left into the negative rail. So this is basically all we need to move the stepper motor. So enable is low, which will enable it. We didn't deal with any of these. We put sleep and reset together. We link them with the little wire link right here. We have step uh, tied to ground and we have direction tied to ground. But we also move step out to one side of a tactile switch the other side of the tactile switch going to 5 volts. Now let me refocus the camera and we can do this all in real time so you'll see it's not difficult. Alright, so in refocusing the camera I've noticed I've made a mistake. These two resistors here, I actually put 1K resistors in and that was messing me up. So just make sure these are all the same um, and also make sure you don't have just random 1K resistors the same length hang it out on your bench if you plan on using the 7.5K resistors. But now this should all work. So in order to see the stepper motor spinning, the, a good thing to do is to use masking tape because the stepper motor only spins 1.8 degrees per pulse. So I'm going to put masking tape on here so it's easier for you guys to see it spin. I actually got to move it around so it's not in our way. Okay. 
So, first I'm going to give the logic circuit some power. So I just have a 9 volt battery to power the breadboard power supply. And still we can move the shaft, nothing has changed. I'm just going to press this OK and this will give power to our stepper motor. And right away I can't spin that shaft. So this is being held steady because we have the enable pin low. Now I'm going to go and press this button right here and there we go. It'll take forever to go all the way around but you see the point. Simple as that. We only made a few connections, we needed a couple little support components but there you go. This stepper motor now runs and now you should have an idea on how to do it yourself. But can we make this circuit a little bit better? I wonder. So what if we wanted to choose which direction the stepper motor goes instead of just chancing it and swapping it? What if we want to go both directions? Well, I have these little toggle switches which we can use. So for starters, let's move the direction pin out to where we can use it. So that's that last one here. Move it out further away. There we go. Now how these switches work is one pin is common, the middle one, and then it links it to the side where you have the slider to. So the slider is uh, this side, so this pin is connected to the common. If I slide it the other way, that means this pin up here is connected to the common. So I'm going to put the common, the middle one, into the middle here. So there we go. And now we're going to move the 7.5K resistor off the direction pin, which is this last one here. We're going to put it here. So now, when the switch is toggled upwards, the direction pin is tied to ground. So nothing's changed if I leave it like this. This should still work the way it was. But now if we put a second 7.5K resistor and we put it on the other side of the switch, and tie it to 5 volts, now we should have power going to the pin at all times if we toggle it this way and should make our stepper motor run in the other direction. So let me refocus the camera and we'll see if that works. And let's see if it works. So the switch is toggled down. It is pulled high. So we should get one direction. So you see it's heading this way or clockwise. If it doesn't seem like it steps evenly, that's because the switch is not debounced. More about debouncing in another video. Now, if I flip this switch, and I promise you, I have not tried this before. There it goes. It's going the other direction. See those big steps it takes? That's because the switch is bouncing on the contacts back and forth and it's sending a bunch of pulses. And I mean this is it. That's it. It's that simple. You can easily run your stepper motor by sending a pulse train with a push button switch. But in the next video, which will be part two, I'll show you how to use an Arduino instead of a switch and be able to do it faster. So if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. If you didn't find it useful, let me know what I can do to improve this video. And if there's any other aspects of stepper motors that you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.